my dear students assalamu alaikum warahmatullah uh, our lecture today is uh, about uh, speech organs we have already started uh, talking about the first organ of speech which is the vocal cords or uh, more accurately the vocal folds now this is a continuation of of this uh, uh, subject Actually, we said that uh, the vocal folds are two flat strips of rubber that lie opposite to each other. They are situated inside the larynx and they can take two different positions, either to be closed or to be open. Now, we want to give more details about these positions and we say that the vocal folds sometimes are sometimes closed tightly that is they are strongly uh, in contact with each other in this case the the air pushed by the lungs will not pass through them i mean through the vocal folds the air cannot pass through them and this means that it's going to be compressed so and when the vocal folds are opened suddenly, the air bursts out with a coughing noise. A coughing noise like... <coughs> <coughs> if you try uh, doing this coughing noise while putting your fingers on, on your neck, on the side of your neck, uh, more specifically on your throat, you are going to feel that there is something happening inside this uh, uh this place inside the the larynx okay that is the the vocal folds take the tight position the air is pushed but cannot pass through then when the vocal folds are apart, apart from each other they are away from each other the air will be exploded okay this is exactly what happens when we produce the glottal stop <coughs> Actually, this sound is uh, not one of the basic sounds in, in English, though some speakers of English might pronounce the sound te, for example, <coughs> in some contexts. Like, instead of saying put, they say put, put, put it there, put it there. It means put it there. Okay? Uh, but in Arabic, this, uh, this sound is very frequent. Okay? هذا حرف أحد حروف الجوف، okay الهمزة، okay الألف. So um, when the vocal folds uh, uh, take the other position, that is, they are gently brought together, not firmly, not tightly. Here we ex expect the vibration to happen. What is the vibration? It is a very important. Keyword in our subject for today. This is called al ihtizaz and this is related to the movement of the vocal folds. The movement of the vocal folds. When these vocal folds vibrate, we are going to have voice. I'm going to explain. When the lungs push the air, the air will force the folds apart for a moment. And then they will return to the closed position. So, uh, suppose that the vocal folds are just like the two parts of a window, the two pieces of a window, and you are opening and closing the window. That is to, uh, to uh, keep them closed for a moment, then open them, open and close, open and close. This is what happens exactly when the... The, the, vocal the, the vocal folds are brought together gently, not tightly, because when they are tightly together, the air will not be able to pass. The, the air will, will force the, the vocal folds to be apart from each other, then they come back to a closed position. So it is just like opening and closing, opening and closing. Now, this movement of opening and closing are repeated again and again and again. So what is the importance of repeating 
uh, or this process of opening and closing, okay, this process could be very quick, very rapid. In this case, the we will have a high note and we will have more voicing. Again, if the, if the process of uh, uh, opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, close, opening, close is very quick, just like this, we are going to have a high note and we will have more voicing. But when the process is slow, opening, close, opening, close, oh, this is slow, the result will be a low note and we will have less voicing. Okay, so we have more voicing when the process is very quick. We have less voicing when the process of opening and closing the vocal folds is slow. Okay, so what is voice? Voice is the note produced by the opening and closing of the vocal folds. The amount of voice we have depends on what? Depends on the speed of the opening and closing process. As I said, the more speed we have in the process of opening and closing, the more amount of voice we have. If the speed is very slow, less speed, we will have less amount of voicing. Okay? So in terms of voice, sounds can be with, with, without voice or with voice. Okay? So if the sounds are produced without voice, we call the sound a voiceless sound, a voiceless sound. You can try this by putting your fingers uh, on, um, on your throat and pronounce the sound, for example, S is a voiceless sound. And you can check this by putting your finger on your neck. You will hear and feel no vibration at all. It means that there is no voicing. There is no vibration. There is no voicing. But with voiced sounds like z, 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 look at the difference. S, s, s. You can feel the difference clearly if you pronounce s, then z, s, s, s. Uh, With z, we have voiced or uh, we have voicing. It means z is a voiced sound. So what are voiceless sounds? The voiceless sounds are the sounds produced with no vibration in the vocal folds. No vibration. Examples, s, t, t, f. These are voiceless sounds because the vocal, co the vocal cords, they, uh, they, they actually, they do, not, they do not vibrate. In the pronunciation of voiceless sounds, the vocal folds are drawn apart. They are in an open position and the air can pass through between them with no vibration. So what is the position of the vocal cords or the vocal folds in the pronunciation of voiceless sounds? They are apart from each other. It means they are in an open position, not a closed position, neither tight nor gentle okay voiced sounds on the other hand are the sounds produced with vibration in the vocal cords or the vocal folds so put your finger here on your neck and say z, d, z. you can feel the vibration in the vocal cords it means that this these are voiced sounds put your finger and uh, pr pr produce these sounds and feel that. You, you actually need to practice. If you practice and understand, you will never forget. Okay? So, um, if you feel any vibration in the vocal cords, this is voiced. If you don't feel, this is voiceless. This is the conclusion we can draw here. Now, is the role of the vocal folds important? Of course it is important. Why? Because the vocal folds and the position they take and the vibration they make can distinguish between similar sounds. If we take an example, T and D. T and D are both stops. Look, it, the air is stopped. It, 
the air is stopped. So both of them are stop sounds. And t, d, t, d, in terms of place of articulation, both are produced in the same place. T, d, t, d, okay? Later on, inshallah, I'm going to tell you what do you mean by place, what do you mean by manner, and the types of consonants in terms of place, in terms of manner. Now we are talking about voicing, actually, voicing. And in voicing, sounds are either voiced or voiceless. Now, T is what? Yalla, try, put your finger on your neck. T, 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 no vibration. It is voiceless. D, d, the other sound. D, 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 no, this is voiced because I have vibration. So both of them are stops. Both of them are alveolar, but T is voiceless while D is voiced. Okay? Now, the other part of the, voc of, of the organs of speech is called the palate. The palate. Or sometimes called the roof of the mouth. The roof of the mouth. So the palate is the roof of the mouth. It separates the mouth cavity from the na nose cavity by the soft palate. Most of it is hard and fixed, which is the alveolar ridge and the hard palate. And there is the soft palate, which is soft and movable. Then, just mean hard and fixed, and the other part is is soft and movable. Let's uh, talk in details. You can feel the hard fixed part with your tongue. You can. Uh, uh, you can raise your tongue up and, and, and feel with your tongue the roof of the mouth. Huh. You can do it. The, uh, the, uh, uh, but the, the soft palate, you, ca you cannot feel it. You can see it in a mirror. If you put a mirror in front of you and say, oh, and try to open your mouth as much as you can, as much as you can, you are going to see the, the soft palate. Possibly, most probably you are going to see it. This, is, this explains why the doctor asks the patient to say, ah, oh, because the doctor wants to see the inside of your mouth. So that's why the doctor asks you to say, ah, oh, okay? So you can try this, put a mirror in front of you and say, ah, oh, and feel, and see actually, not feel. See whether you can uh, you can uh, manage seeing the soft palate or not. Now the palate is divided into the hard fixed palate and the soft palate. The hard fixed palate is called the alveolar ridge. Where is the alveolar ridge? Uh, if we go back to to the previous lecture, uh, there we have a figure. Look at this figure. Yeah, this is this is the palate from here to here. If you can see well, this is the the palate. This part is the soft palate. It is soft and movable. But this part, the highest part, and this part, this is the hard palate. This is the hard palate. This is the hard palate. It is hard and fixed. The alveolar ridge is the area immediately be behind the teeth. This is the front upper teeth. This is the front upper teeth. And this area, you can feel it with your tongue, exactly behind the, the upper front teeth. <coughs> this is called the alveolar ridge. This is called the alveolar ridge, okay? And this is the hard palate. And this is what... This is the soft palate. This is the soft palate, okay? So this is the hard palate, alveolar ridge, soft palate. These two parts form the hard palate, which is fixed and unmovable. And this part represents the soft part of the palate, which is, which is movable, okay? Yes, so we have two parts of the hard palate, the alveolar ridge, and the hard palate. And the second part is the soft palate. The alveolar ridge is the part of the gum immediately behind the upper front teeth. It is important in the pronunciation of sounds like t, d, n, t. 
Tadna. Because the tongue is going to be raised and be in touch with the alveolar ridge. Okay? And that's why these are called alveolar sounds. Alveolar sounds. Okay? These are called alveolar sounds. Why alveolar? Because they are produced when the tip of the tongue is raised and be in contact with the alveolar ridge. Okay? Now, the other part, which is the second part here, the heart palate, is the highest part. Look, it is the highest part. This one, the highest part. Okay? Of the, of the palate that lies between the alveolar ridge and the beginning of the soft palate. It is important in the pronunciation of sounds like R and Y, 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 Y. You can try. Please always try and practice. That's why we call them palatal sounds. Palatal sounds. Or sometimes we call them post alveolar alveolar sounds. Okay? The same idea. Post alveolar يعني ما بعد alveolar ridge. Palatal sounds. Palatal sounds. Like ي yeah and ر. Okay? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, next time, inshallah, we will uh, talk about the soft palate, which is very important and has a very important role. Thank you.